All right, so this is going to be kind of my first video on Lebanomancy, but it's also going to be kind of a general video. Whenever you're learning a new type of magic, especially one that's outside of your general craft, like for existence, I'm a Norse pagan, and Lebanomancy very well may exist, but it's definitely not the preferred form of divination, and it doesn't, and at least through my research, there is no Norse Lebanomancy, though it may be under a different word, and that's again something else you have to research, but you also do have to research the culture. And I've done this. You know, at least a little bit, archaeologist, um, specifically um, Irving, um, Irving Linkling, I believe is his name. I might have to check that, and if it is, it's here. He's a great source, because he, you know, has the PhD and is known for this, but especially the gods heavily associated with that, because those are the gods associated with that kind of divination. Specifically in Babylon, it was Shemesh, who goes by other names, who and Shamash was obviously the god of divination, he was the god of the sun, justice, morality, those kind of things. He was very important to that culture. So arguably using that magic at all does call upon him. And he obviously was important. He was the son of S uh, Sin, I believe is how it's pronounced, who was the moon god, and Ningal, who was, you know, the great lady of reeds. So there's a lot of symbolism that you're going to have to use there. Uh, I personally am going to try to find uh, very sun-oriented incense burners or other symbols to use when I do this, because you do have to give honor even if you don't work with these deities, because that can throw everything off. Even if you are protected by your own gods, there's a lot to deal with. I hope this was informative. Thank you for watching. I'll do more videos tomorrow. Alright, sorry for not posting yesterday like I said I would, but I was a lot busier than I thought I would. To make up for that, I will post as many videos as I can today without feeling like I'm covering all of my knowledge before I get my items, which I have to wake at least my next paycheck for. Now, in the Bottomancy, while you can use the cone incense or the stick incense, these are relatively newer forms of incense. And personally, I am trying to recreate the Babylonian tradition of doing this, and then after that, do more research and do my best to recreate uh, the Kemetic, uh, the Greeks and other such things, because it did travel from Babylon to Egypt, which then traveled to Eastern Europe and other places. So there's that. Um, my next videos will probably be talking about specific incense and their purposes. Thank you so much for watching. Now, obviously in the Bonomancy, something that is really important is obviously the incense you're working with, and different incense have different usages. However, if you're a fan of etymology, you already know that Libanomancy comes from the Greek word libanos, I believe is how it is pronounced. I'll And through everything that I've researched, every almost every single one will say that frankincense is a good all-around incense to use. So regardless of the purpose, frankincense is great if you are making your own herbal incense, which also might be recommended. I will personally be using resin, at least for the examples. The most common incense usage is generally divine talk which is kind of a loose word for saying talking to the divine, commuting with the gods regardless of who they may be. Because, again, Lebanomancy is a multicultural practice. I'm just specifically trying to learn the Babylonian tradition right now. And for resin incense, you want to use uh, gum arabic or gum mastic. And myrrh is also a really good choice here. Uh, you can also use camphor, but do not use synthetics. And for herbals, Balm of Gilead, the Dittany of Crete, Jasmine have been high choices. I've met someone who uses the Bottomancy at least a little bit, and they specifically recommended sandalwood, specifically white. And thank you so much for watching. I plan to do more of these tonight and more tomorrow. Thank you. Alright, so another topic that you might be using Libanomancy for 
is the specific uh, topic of fertility, which there isn't really a lot list of. This is actually a really short list. I'm very surprised about that. For resins, the only, like, universally agreed thing is pine. And for the most part, I haven't found too many other sources that say anything is specifically good for that unless it is specifically associated with a god of fertility. Again, that's resin, pine. Uh, for herbals, it's myrtle, patchouli, and strawberry leaf as an ingredient. Again, this is specifically talking about if you are using Lebanomancy to ask questions about fertility. Again, Lebanomancy covers a wide variety of areas. Once I actually get to the interpretations, you'll kind of see that there was a lot. And thank you for watching. I hope this was informative. Alright, so for today's video, we're going to be talking about what incense to use when you have questions about finances. Uh, for resins, you've got benzoin and labdidum, I believe is how it's pronounced. I'll have the actual words down here. And for herbals, you've got basil, any kind of mints. They do seem to recommend peppermint especially, but any mints work. Uh, blackberry, bergamot cinnamon and orange peel which i thought was interesting i've never seen an orange peel incense but should work and yeah those were the incense to use for finances babylon was one of the first civilizations so obviously had a lot of you know finances to worry about thank you for watching part eight lebanomancy video and today's video will be what incenses that i've you know amass through various sources on what to use if you're asking a health question. Now for resins, we have a repeat of two ones that have shown up a lot. Uh, we have a repeat of pine and myrrh, and those are, again, about the only ones that seem relatively universally agreed upon that were in multiple sources. And for herbals, uh, we have cypress, juniper berry, lemon balm, uh, mugwort, and time. And again, those were the ones to use when asking questions about health, whether it be your sick, a family member sick. Again, this specifically a question about health shows up in the interpretations that we know, which I'll get to once I finish all these. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. I'll all right, tonight's video is about what incense lobotomancies use when asking questions about love. Now, for resins, you have white copal, amber, and dragon's blood. And for herbals, you have apple flower, clove, lavender. Sorry, I'm really nearsighted, so sometimes looking at my cam uh, my notes is a little hard. Oris root and violet. And again, this is a wide variety of things. This is not just, you know, romantic love. This is literally questions on any kind of love which have a wide variety of both questions and magical purposes and whatnot. I appreciate everyone who watches and thank you so much. Alright, so this video is going to be about something probably that's going to be mostly up my alley because Today's video is about which incense is used specifically to talk to spirits. Now, we already talked about what to talk to gods with. This is what to talk to spirits with. Now, the first one is highly recommended. It seems to be any kind of copal, though white and black seem to be recommended. I know there's also, like, red copal and other stuff, but they mostly recommend white and black. You can also get murrigan or storax. And for herbals, you have cassia, pomegranate, and dandelion root. Uh, these are the ones specifically talking to spirits, whether it's ancestors, land spirits, even house spirits. I appreciate everyone who watches. I hope this was informative, and I hope you have a good day. We've got one more video. All right, this is the last video that's going to be talking about what specific incenses to make when using Lobotomancy. Uh, make, use, however you see fit. 
and this video will be about what instances are generally recognized as being good for new ventures, which again, with a lot of these, that's a lot of things. Whether it's a new job, new relationship, new pretty much anything, just any new venture. Now for resins, you have frankincense, which as I've already said earlier, is generally the best go-to for anything. You have gum mastic again, and those are the resins. And for herbals, you have lavender, margoram, and vetivert. And yes, that is the last video specifically about incenses. I've ordered some of the materials. Um, I'll definitely show you guys when they get here.